The advantages of cryptocurrencies are sometimes the disadvantages as well. But to me, one of the biggest advantages of them coming along has been that it's, it's hitting finance in the face. It's hitting governments in the face, supranationals in the face, banks in the face, banks are scared. Um, and it's, it's like everyone's got their back up. predominant use of Bitcoin and most cryptocurrencies is speculation. Some might take exception to that term, but uh, as an investment. In fact, the amount of Bitcoin available that's actually used to buy and sell goods and services is relatively small compared to the volume of Bitcoin that's traded for investment purposes. Let's just throw the rule book out in some ways and reimagine a, a futuristic world in a new way. Be open to all forms of money, all forms of who controls the money, who knows what's possible. The challenge with regulating any technology is that it does have legitimate purposes. The idea of outlawing cryptocurrency is one option. So China, for example, has banned offerings of cryptocurrencies. But they face the challenge, which is common in the online world, is this is a transnational problem. Cryptocurrency is a complex computer program which enables transactions, but they're so complex that they are difficult to hack. There's over 1,500 cryptocurrencies currently. Um, they've got all sorts of names. There's even a Trump coin. <laughs> they're developed by IT entrepreneurs. It's like they've got loose and they're letting their brains run wild going to develop all these new forms of money. But by breaking the rules, they're sort of coming up with new ways of doing things and, you know, we're all being challenged. The rapid rise of cryptocurrencies was really motivated by the financial crisis of 2007, 2008. And a guy or gal, we don't know, called Satoshi Nakamoto proposed a way of transacting on the internet um, without any middlemen, meaning banks and financial institutions. What happened during the financial crisis, and of course over the years, is this enormous distrust of banks. A lot of people believe that it was due to the largesse and the mismanagement of money by the banks, who were then bailed out by the government. You know, it's a case of socialising the losses and privatising the profits. So in order to buy a part of a Bitcoin or buy some Bitcoin, you need to sign up to an exchange which allows, I'm guessing, fiat deposit, which is like US, Australian dollar currency, bank transfers, something like that. Um, you kind of need to sign up with them. They need to verify your identity, which means like uploading a passport. And once you're approved, you can purchase any cryptocurrency with a bank account. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy once you kind of do the whole identity checks. The main risk is the frustration of the rate. Say, you, uh, for example, today the rate of Bitcoin is 10,000 and tomorrow it may, it may drop to, say, 9,000. But on the other side, some people like it. Some investors, they like it. If I, I'm very smart in investment, I can buy the Bitcoin at 6,000 and tomorrow it increases to 10,000. I earn immediately in less than 24 hours. I won't be able to steal Bitcoin from the Bitcoin system, but I can steal the Bitcoin from your computer. I can try to use different ways of hacking, even including social engineering, becoming your friends, try to get your ID and password of your Bitcoin wallet and wire it out. If you do lose your passwords and you've got no recovery for them, they're gone. Even though there's over 1,500 currencies currently, their rules on how they deal with things when they go wrong all differ. 
but there's no one to run to when things go wrong. That's the insecure bit of Bitcoin, and that's actually the main issue that we should focus on if we are going to use uh, blockchain or, or a cryptocurrency in the future. Here you have a technology that not many people understand, promises great riches, and there's a level of urgency, you better get in quick. And so the potential for scam websites, scam offers in terms of Bitcoins that don't actually exist or Bitcoin services that don't exist, you hand over your money, you've lost it, is very, very real. The broader and in a way more profound use of cryptocurrencies in relation to crime is facilitating other criminal offences. There is the potential to trade in illegal goods and services online, you don't want to be identified engaging in those transactions, so a cryptocurrency that promises a secure transaction, which is relatively anonymous, is obviously appealing in those online marketplaces. Cryptocurrencies will not become mainstream until they have established a trust framework, and that means recognised by institutions, and some kind of regulation about how they can exist so people can trust them. We see in the United States, for example, the Securities Exchange Commission looking at how do we bring Bitcoin exchanges into the financial regulatory system. The other aspect is bringing it within anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing laws. Now Australia, with amendments to our money laundering laws, are seeking to bring the cryptocurrency exchanges into the anti-money laundering laws, so requiring them to register, so they have to be identified, having know your customer laws in terms of who has the account, reporting suspicious transactions. So it seeks to bring the cryptocurrency within the established regulatory framework. One of the big issues with cryptocurrencies, now not all of them, some of them are quite efficient, the newer ones that have come out, but the more established ones, such as Bitcoin, use an enormous amount of energy to process a single transaction. The energy it takes to maintain Bitcoin is the same as the whole of the country of Uzbekistan. It's more than all the energy consumed in Portugal. It's more than the energy consumed in Singapore. More broadly, cryptocurrencies are simply based on blockchain technology. And that's, it seems to me, the really exciting aspect of where this might go is what other uses are there, legitimate uses uh, for blockchain. Blockchain is the underlying technology in cryptocurrency and blockchain is not limited to the payment system. The best way to describe it is it's a distributed set of records. They keep talking about it in the cryptocurrency world as a ledger, and that has a specific meaning for finance. If we bring it to healthcare, it's a distributed set of records. As I've looked at this over the last three months, it's exploded. I've come across a new application called Haver, using blockchain in the setting of helping people maintain sobriety. And it's drawing on the community concept. It's drawing on the fact that multiple people in a community will have a record of this person's uh, behaviour. So they can say, I noticed that you haven't recorded your sobriety on the system in the last few days. I'd like you to have, please, a random urine test. And that's what they're signing up to in, in agreeing to use the system. I think there's a real opportunity with blockchain, especially with the work that we're doing with Monash. Blockchain has the potential to allow us to actually share annotations of data with our partners globally and actually maintain a, uh, a common understanding. One of the real challenges for law enforcement is that data can be changed very easily, it's volatile. So one of the issues in terms of proof is making sure that the data that was in one jurisdiction is the same as the data that was moved to another jurisdiction. We study and analyse, you know, how money works. What are the consequences of making certain policy decisions, such as cryptocurrency? We have a Monash Research Centre which is looking at cryptocurrencies, not in the terms of manufacturing more of them, but how to make them better. We are definitely on the hype cycle around blockchain, and the nature of that cycle, which is quite well known, is that there'll be a peak of overinflated expectations, and then over time it'll settle in and we'll find where its true place is. Currently I'm teaching some third year, mainly double degree students. They just love this you're able to now press beyond the textbook and just let's reimagine the world.